Be warned, you have just crossed the threshold into the most hazardous piece of space real estate in the solar system. At Jupiter's magnetosphere, there's almost nothing that can protect you. That's a kind of a don't enter this zone at any costs. And if you do, you better be prepared to pay in terms of your electronics. You know, you are toast. Step inside Jupiter's raging magnetic field and you enter a radiation hot zone of staggering intensity. Where incoming charged particles from the sun are whipped into a relativistic frenzy. Buffeted by the solar wind, the magnetic maelstrom streams back almost as far as the orbit of Saturn. The magnetosphere of Jupiter, the largest thing in the solar system, um, if it were visible from the Earth, it would be the size of the full moon in the sky. This was like a magnet to NASA, setting off for deep space for the first time in the early 1970s. The Pioneer missions were initially designed to fly the first few test instruments into the environment, sample how bad the radiation was, and oh, by the way, let's kind of throw a camera on there. Maybe we can get two or three pictures along the way. It's almost like putting your toe in the water. The water proved deep and deadly. But despite faltering instruments and fuzzy photos, the Pioneer flybys paved the way for the missions that followed. What Pioneer told us was that Jupiter's radiation belts were even more intense than we had anticipated. And that meant that our next mission, Voyager, suddenly went into rework real fast to put more shielding on board. Shields up, Captain, because we knew we were going to be getting a lot of radiation dose. When the space-hardened Voyagers 1 and 2 flew past in 1979, on their way to the outer solar system, Jupiter's great mysteries only deepened. How were these powerful magnetic storms generated inside a giant ball of gas? Why was one moon boiling with volcanoes, while its neighbor remained covered with ice? And what lies beneath Jupiter's clouds? It was Galileo's mission to investigate.